Hey guys, today we're gonna cover a knife change on a BC-1000. These are some of the tools we use to do that. You're gonna need a torque wrench that goes up to at least 200 foot-pounds. We use a breaker bar or cheater pipe um, to kind of assist with that. We'll show you that later. Magnetic tray to keep up with bolts. Window scraper, flathead screwdriver, 16 and 24 millimeter socket. Couple of extensions. That's the DeWalt half inch impact. Hearing protection, acetone for cleaner, and then we have a quart of motor oil that we use to lubricate the bolts. Uh, that's clean oil. I'll show you that later in a couple of rags. What we do on our machine is we write down the next three intervals of maintenance uh, per the hours. And so you can see today we're at, uh, let's see, 1202 hours. So we hit our 1200 mark this week. Uh, and we denote what we're going to do next with an abbreviation. So a K stands for knife, O stands for oil change, and A stands for air filter. Uh, basically, we do knives every 50 hours because we're dealing with a lot of hardwoods down here in Florida. Um, we do oil every 50 hours, and we do air roughly every 100 hours. So we're at 12.02 there. I'm going to set you guys up top and show you what we're going to do here. This is the lid that you open to get to the drum where your knives are located. We've got six bolts here. These are 16 millimeters. What's handy about the magnetic tray is it's a great place to throw your bolts so they don't wind up inside this drum cavity. We'll talk about that in a second. I usually keep this up here on top of the machine uh, or up front so that it's away from my drum. You open this lid up, you'll notice inside the drum, and there's one of the knives. There is a locking pin here. You can see the decal is kind of worn off a little bit, but it locks the drum in place. There's a there's a depression right here on this drum, and if you rotate that forward, you drop your pin down. It'll hold that drum in place while you're working on it, so you're not fighting when you're tightening or loosening up. Four volts here, um, just to kind of give you a brief on the knives. The Vermeer manual recommends that you replace these four bolts after you've dulled both sides of the knife. So you can see on this side, we're kind of jagged. We've been running on these for a while. This back side is still fresh, so when we put these knives on, this was a brand new set of bolts. So we're gonna flip these knives, reuse these bolts. But the next time we go to change this out, it'll get a new set of knives on it, uh, or a resharpened set, and it'll get four brand new bolts. The idea there is that at 210 foot-pounds of torque, you always run the risk, if you reuse them more than twice, that they'll snap off in this block down below, which is where the threads kind of anchor into. Um, it's not something you wanna have happen, I can assure you. You'll notice around these bolt heads, there's a lot of trash in here. Wood chips get compacted in there. A lot of guys will take a screwdriver, um, and we used to do that. We don't anymore. We were at a dealer uh, several years ago, and one of the guys had homemade his own tool, and it was something similar to this. Basically, had taken a socket and an angle grinder and just cut notches in it. Um, I've had this one for a long time. This is a one inch. We welded a piece of pipe to it, um, if you can see that real well. Some other guys use a hole saw bit, kind of like you would drill a core into a door. They happen to fit real well in there as well, so that's an option. Um, we just keep using this one because we've made it. I will tell you that now that this is open in here, you want to be careful not to drop any tools down in there. Um, if you do, you're going to have to crank up the end feed roller if you can't get your hand down in there and pull that tool out. So I'm pretty careful about keeping my hand on both of my tools while I'm running these out. And don't forget your hearing protection. I go forward and reverse until I can kind of fill the socket sink down to clear all the material. Two or three times usually does the trick. If you got anything loose in there, it'll blow right out. What 
I like to do is spin the drum and do both sides so I don't have to keep switching tools back and forth. It's pretty fast. I will tell you to be careful rotating this drum. Um, you don't want to grab onto the back side of that sharp knife there and you don't want to get your fingers pinched in that. to do both sides is I rotate the drum and that kind of helps the debris to fall out of the bolt heads and you can see here now these are pretty clean there's not much in there and my socket will get down and bite really well so this bolt is going to be a 24 millimeter socket first couple you can usually get your impact right in there on that last one we'll have to use an extension because we're against this wall here so we're gonna pull these out save each one of these. I don't know if you can tell here in the video, but on my glove, you can see the oil. Uh, the purpose in this is by putting oil or an anti-seize lubricant on here, when you tighten these down because they're under such pressure, um, it'll keep these from actually seizing up in that threaded block inside the drum. So, and this is right on the tag, I believe, uh, in the Vermeer hand, handbook, but we always dip them in 5W30. Every time we take them out, every time we put them in, uh, this is my third BC-1000. We've been doing this for years, and we've never broken a bolt. We've never had one seize up. Uh, one of the guys at the Vermeer dealership taught us that pretty early on. So we're going to set those in our magnetic tree. I'm going to pull this knife off carefully. You'll notice a couple of things. There's some debris build up in here, which you can see me knocking off. We take that off on both sides. I'm going to take it off the knife as well. That's where our window scraper comes in. Some guys use a green wheel or even a scotch bright pad. I find that a razor blade is pretty, pretty quick. Yeah, it leaves a pretty good flat surface. So that's the majority of the debris knocked off. And I go ahead and get the stuff on the edges uh, just because I don't want trash falling off once I clean that in there. We're gonna do the same thing in here. Just kind of knock off anything that's in that area. You can see there's a little bit of tree sap, this black stuff built up around the edges. get any of the heavy stuff. Take our clean rag and just kind of knock the debris out of there. And the next part's not in the manual, but I find it's helpful because you get a, uh, get a true flat surface to flat surface. So I'll take a little acetone on a rag and I wipe that extra tree sap or debris off of there. And acetone is a uh, 100% de-oiler, de-greaser, so it will dry almost instantly. And I'm gonna do the same thing to my knife surface. We want a good flat contact so we can drive those bolts down. There's no gap in there and it doesn't allow the bolts to loosen up. And that should be plenty good enough. So we're gonna put the sharp end facing the rear of the machine. Lay that back in. Grab our clean 5W30 motor oil. And I just keep refilling this jug. We've got it labeled bolts. Uh, I've had it for years. We dip. You can't get too much oil on there is what I found. Um, if it's dripping, it's not gonna hurt anything. And we do them one at a time.
I like to run them all down loose. Uh, and then I'm gonna run through and just kind of tighten them up as hard as I can go on level three on this impact, uh, which will still be under the 210 recommended foot pounds. And then I'm gonna come back and do them with a torque wrench at the end. turns on that torque wrench later which you will appreciate with as little of a uh, space as you've got to work in here so same thing we're just going to repeat that process real quick on this side There we go. Sometimes that debris gets stuck on there. acetone again I wouldn't use a grinding wheel or anything like that we don't want to mar the steel uh, a green wheel will clean these up pretty good without damaging the steel Perfect. again sharp edge towards the back of the machine line up your bolt holes Lubricate our bolts again. Just a quick dip. We've had this machine since it was brand new. It's about four years old, 1,200 hours. Um, you can do the math on that, how many sets of knives we've changed on this in that time. And again, I've never had a set loosen up on me using this method. And I've got here just uh, Craftsman. I believe this one goes up to 225 pounds. Uh, just a quick tip on torque wrenches. You're always supposed to turn them down when you're not using them so that you don't damage that internal spring. Um, we turn ours down to 40, which I think is the recommended. And we're gonna crank this bad boy up. Once you've got it set to 210 foot pounds, we're gonna use um, we're gonna use it without the cheater pipe first and get them close. And then we're gonna slip that pipe on for a little bit of leverage and uh, get a double click on each one of these. And again, don't forget your pin. Makes it a little easier so you're not fighting your drum. Check the first one just in case we've had any movement. And we are spot on. So we're gonna pull the pin, rotate the drum to the other side. And this is where the cheetah pipe's gonna come in handy because we're gonna lose some leverage. 
reaching across the machine here. Again, be careful each time you move to not lose your socket in the drum. Coming back to number one. Last but not least, don't forget your pin. Um, I have closed the lid, forgot the pin, I had to take the bolts back out of the lid, and it locks into place. All you have to do is push it forward there. Um, I'm gonna clear the debris, drop the lid. Back to our 16 millimeter. For those of you who are kind of new to chippers, um, on the underside of this drum, there's what's called a shear bar. And that shear bar is a bar that's between the cutter on the drum and the kind of the end feed, I guess the plate or the bottom of the machine you would call it. And each time you change the knives on a machine, you're supposed to adjust that shear bar. And what that does is it adjusts the size of the chip so as you sharpen a knife, uh, the knife will actually get narrower and narrower. And so if you don't move your shear bar, that's gonna cause for a bigger chip, which is gonna make your machine work harder, uh, could potentially clog it um, or kill the machine. I've got a few in the back of the truck, so I'm gonna show you what a good consistent chip looks like. Uh, on these guys, I don't remember the torque, spedding, uh, torque spec, but I always just go number one, excuse me, number two. Last but not least, I always fire the machine up, make sure the drum rotates no problems before we take it back out into the field tomorrow. And this is a gas engine, a PSI. That's a pretty good consistent chip right there. Um, if you're getting wood chips that are, you know, the size of your hand in there, or they're much thicker than about a quarter of an inch, um, you need to look at adjusting it. On these machines from the factory, there is a a bar that attaches underneath here. Um, that bar is one eighth inch thick. Uh, we've taken ours off the machine because it would vibrate and fall off. <coughs> But the, the idea there is underneath the machine, there's a trap door. I'll crawl under and show you in just a minute. When you open that trap door, there's a gap between your shear bar and your cutter, your knife edge on your drum. And so you insert that 1 8 inch piece of steel, loosen the bolts on your shear bar, and you can shift it back and forth until you get that desired thickness. So those four bolts, one, two, three, four, and the instructions are right there for the adjustment on that. Uh, I will caution you when you open that, make sure you've got safety glasses on. There's usually a small amount of debris in there. Uh, relatively simple to adjust though. 
And you only have to do that whenever you're changing out a set of knives, not when you're adjusting an existing set that's on there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like or subscribe. Later, tree people.